Oh, by the way, almost forgot, shout out to Drew Spicer. Go check him out. He actually makes, like, pretty amazing videos. He comments on a lot of my videos. He's a very nice person as well. He, you can also listen to him say, like, a yeah, boy, continuously, or even saying, eat my salad, like, 143 times. I don't know. Go check him out. He's cool. Ah, uh, so, what's happening in the YouTube world, huh? Honest Trailers did Doctor Who? I thought that they never- Shut the frick up, phone. Must be Christmas. Get it? Because this story started like right after Christmas? I don't know. I looked at the broadcast and- Oh, well, so. Uh, me and two other people were taking apart a computer trying to figure out what was wrong with this charging thing. And randomly one of them asked for a- Kratana? Like, okay. Or just order it off. Why do we need a Kratana? What? That's why I said Kratana. Oh, Katana. Sorry, I was thinking of the Crotons. Hey, what's up guys, it's Power 9 it's Harry Adam here. Welcome to my review of Doctor Who, the Crook. Oh, this is Region 1. So come out of says yeah. My bum is fused to the bed because my seating was a little bit... Hold on. Oh, that's better. Okay. Alright, uh, so... What the heck? Oh yeah, well, we, okay, so I have a whole bunch of Dada DVDs down here that can play like 4th and 5th and 6th Doctor Stories, but for some reason, it won't play on this DVD player, but it will on this one. So, I don't know, actually it was a different DVD player, and that, okay, it was a different DVD player at the time, and then now that's over at someone else's house, and we got this new one, and we also got... <laughs> There's a DVD player identical to this one downstairs, and it played the data DVDs. And there was also one at another guy's house, so we got this one upstairs in exchange for the one that didn't play anything. And then we got this new one before that, try thinking that it might work, but then we found out that's the same as, as my grandma and grandpa's DVD player, which also doesn't play data DVDs, so of course it doesn't work. But it should work for this DVD player. But what I mainly <laughs> whatever the word is, is this remote? I haven't seen this remote in freaking ages. I remember I always used to have fun, like, you know, like, like, like you know, the satisfaction of playing with this thing at the back and stuff like that. I always used to do that until it broke, and my dad once tried to, like, use, like, a whole bunch of glue to fix it, but then I tried to remove it again, and then it, and then dad was like, no, no, you can't continue doing it, and I was like, oh, well, that's kind of why I wanted it to be fixed. <laughs> okay, I have the faintest idea why this is here, though. This is like a VHS remote. But, uh, I guess it's for this? Holy crap, we have three DVD players stacked up on each other. Look at that. Okay, anyway. Pfft. So anyway, this is the Crota, story number 47. Well, do you know that it's, like, the amount, like, the last second Doctor story makes the story count in even 50? I think that that's pretty cool. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's just, it's so cool. I, I mean, like, I think it's, I think the wires are connected to this one. I can connect it to this one if I want. What is happening? Okay, there we go. Yeah, so see, it's kind of drowsy, you can tell. But, uh, yeah. I, I just think it's really cool. I mean, like, I guess maybe some of the first Doctor stories could have been grouped, but... No, but because, like, they all had separate titles, but it was kind of obvious which stories belonged to what. I guess the Keys of Marinus was kind of like six separate one-parters, really. Well, it was more like episode one and six were connected, and episode... Five and six. I guess. Let's just start the review. Come. From Fancy PBS. We're gonna have another trailer for the Doctor Who, the complete sixth series. Jinx. What the heck is this? Oh, it's a pillow. I thought it might have been Teddy. Teddy, what are you doing here? And Joey, you're all here. Okay, I'm sorry, but why the heck is episode one showing this background while episode two, three, and four are showing the theme song? I I, I don't know, whatever, let's just get on with it. Episode one, here we go. 
What the? Okay, we can't even see that. I, I guess that's like, you know, it's the first Doctor's title sequence, the oh who, like the Doctor oh who, you know what I'm talking about. But like, I feel like normally, okay, yeah, but doesn't the Crotons episode 1 normally happen, like after the theme song? It's not until episode 2 that shows in the middle of the title sequence. Every Doctor Who theme song showing the time vortex of that era, here, that, that, frick, but like, like, I remember in the pilot episode, and in the first episode of the first story, too, it showed, like, this, when they were traveling through time. And then in the chase, it was kind of the trust me. We went, see, like, like this part, see? Doctor, Do oh, who? Or, oh, ho. Ho, ho, who, the, whatever. What the heck is happening here? Oh, it's just going on loop. So the story starts with this cult of people, like, sacrificing themselves to the Crotons. Wonder what a crow, the, the crotons. You get it? Cause that's the title of the stuff. Okay, so it's gonna be uh, one of the females, and then the male's like, "No, no, I won't let you go, cause I'm probably romantically interested in you or something. I don't know." Personally, if I were the doctor, I that was a problem I always had with this story is that. I mean, like, well, like, as in the 60s, because, like, later it's said that, like, he just didn't want to go back to Gallifrey, he wanted to explore, he was bored, he was scared, whatever, but, like, in the 60s, how many people wondered, like, if the Doctor wanted to get home, why wouldn't he just take off in the TARDIS, land, find out it's not Gallifrey, take off, land, take off, land, take off, land, and keep doing that? I guess eventually he got bored, and that's why they kept exploring, but, like, in Doctor Who, the chase... They were being chased by the Daleks, and yet when they landed on the Mary Celeste, they still had to get off the ship. And Ian even asks Barbara, like, why are you getting off? And she's like, I love sailing ships. The freaking Daleks are after you. But as I was saying, if I were the Doctor and if I saw this going on, I'd be just like, skip ahead to the next story. I want to mention how amazing this shot is of all these rocks, and then the TARDIS just appears, but it's like so small right down there. And then, no, and then it even shows them coming out of the TARDIS. Can you imagine, like, so, like, a guy had to stand up there with a the camera, and they told the guys to go cramp themselves in the police box, and when someone yelled action at the top of their lungs, they just walked out. Oh my god, Jamie literally just said my idea! Why does the doctor have an umbrella? Oh yeah, of course. So Zoe is able to tell that, like, the atmosphere is made of sulfur by smelling it? She literally just took a whiff and said, it's sulfur. And the doctor's like, no, it's ozone and sulfur. We're good. Which makes me question my own sense of smell. Because, like, I remember, like, just yesterday, there was this guy who had, like, this random chuck of butter that apparently someone gave him. And then he said that it smelled nice, but I was on the other side of the room and I couldn't smell it. And then he put it in a bag and then went away. And then I, like, sniffed the bag because I didn't want to take the butter out and then mess up the knot. Because he's one of those guys who will always notice. If you touch anything of his stuff, he will come in and notice. But, like, I couldn't smell it through the bag. And then, and then, and then I asked him, like, can I smell the butter? And then I picked it up. And then I smelled it and it was like, whoa, that's definitely butter. So, like, it was, like, one of those things. You know, like, how, like, I, like... There are two types of struggling with eyes. There's long-sided and short-sided. Long-sided means that you can see things clearly in the distance, but they get blurry up close, and short-sided is when you can see clearly up close, but not so much further away. I think it would be much better to be short-sided, because then you could read. If you're long-sided, then if it's too far away, then it's too far away to read, and if it's up close, then it's blurry. But how can you smell the air and know that it's sulfur? I think I remember learning that, saying about like in World War I, some guy like managed to just sniff the air, find out it was chlorine gas, and then found out that they could just urinate in their handkerchiefs and breathe through that to break down the gas? And they had a second world war? I don't know. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that looks pretty fun. How the frick are you doing that? Um, what, how do you know this? What is it? I don't know. There's a ramp here. Yes, and there's a door as well. Is it a wall? Why are you pointing out this there. now? Ooh, it smells a lot stronger around here. How are you able to like smell things and tell what elements it's made out of, and yet when you see a ramp and a door you find it fascinating? 
That was my idea. Oh yeah, because God forbid a machine ever exists. So the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe find out the twist without reading the book first, as I guess the people who are like sent by the law of the Crotons end up dying from the smoke of death and turn into this structure, which is basically a thing with a weird circular slinky thing around it. <laughs> it's like the thing for the web plan, they stopped and then started walking. <laughs> the point no umbrella is that in now. Oh, they don't turn into one of those, they just lose it because they, I guess, disintegrate leaving the necklace behind because the circular slinky goes around and just attaches at the back of their neck so when they disappear it just falls to the ground. But I just remembered when, um, when the woman was saying, like, I gotta go, and he's like, no, you can't. It reminded me because uh, I had notes on my phone, uh, on my laptop actually to remember this, but um, yeah, I almost forgot. When I was going on iTunes, when I was first learning about what Doctor Who was, I was going on iTunes and I thought for a moment that the Crotons was the earliest episode of Doctor Who ever, because it was the only black and white one on uh, iTunes. Sun's out there. Obviously, a pretty relatively nice day out there. But, uh, I can't. Come on, come on, show the trees. There you go. But, um, like, uh, and then when I was just, because iTunes lets you play like a 30 second clip. It showed, like, her saying, like, I must go, and he's like, no, you mustn't. I thought that they were, like, talking about stepping on the TARDIS for the first time. Because the first episode of Doctor Who was An Earthly Child was nothing like I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be, like, the TARDIS being built on Gallifrey and them having to take off for the first time. And I thought the Daleks was going to be, like, also created on Gallifrey. And they realized how that, like, like I, I didn't really know anything about the show. I was just being introduced to this. I legit thought that this image was a building on Gallifrey. And this, like, somewhere here, like, maybe that was the TARDIS. And this is the Doctor, like, talking to this about what the TARDIS is and whether they should go or not. I didn't realize that this was the inside of the TARDIS. So we had a quick, like, five-minute long scene of the Doctor trying to catch everybody up. And then they soon realized the twist of them being killed on the side for the crotons. Screw the law of the crotons. They just came here. That's the whole point. What's their plan? Because like as soon as she steps out, the smoke starts spraying. They're gonna have to be like really quick. That's exactly what they do with the doctor using his umbrella as a shield. Couldn't they have just stepped out of the way? Oh, sorry, mate. So the doctor resorts to literally hypnotizing her with like a pocket watch. Forget, person, forget. Wait a minute. So the guy's all just like, what do we do? Tell them that after thousands of years they've been tricked. You have done this for thousands of years? And have never been visited by an alien? Well, I guess we haven't been, but like, you never thought to maybe, I just got a text, like, go there to see what happens? All of the students, because the Crotons are killing the students, the two highest students of that time, all like start breaking the machinery, and the dog comes in and it's like, you can't just defeat them with axes, they're probably scientifically more advanced than all of us. What is this thing? Is this thing a Croton? It looks like a camera. gonna kill the doctor because he's the clever one. Oh, I've seen this shot before. This one. Smitty, you don't have to go. Why don't you come back? On to part two. Hang on. Diddling, 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 diddling. These are the episodes where you do the captions like that. And of course, what's a Doctor Who episode with a stupid guy doing a freeze frame pose while the villain kills him? Hey, I just want to say a shout out to this guy uh, as well. I think he's really cool. Seriously, look at that mountain. Doesn't that look amazing? Geography Now? He just made a video, what if the Earth was inverted? That's a pretty interesting thing. He probably doesn't even know that I'm giving him a shout out, but whatever, just because. Can you imagine what would happen if just like in an instant, just like that? Did I just teleport something into something here? I don't know. Can you imagine if like every single piece of water became land and every piece of rock became water? Most people would be screwed because they drown into the ocean underneath them, but can you imagine like a sink that's spilling out like rock? 
I don't know. Anyway. So as it turns out, the the very end, the final bit of the doctor going like this to block himself from the thing, actually is resolving the cliffhanger. It's only looking for his face. So when he does this, the machine isn't smart enough to realize like, oh wait, it's still there, it's just behind his hands now. And then once he kills that guy, it thinks that it succeeded, because it was only programmed to kill once the doctor. And I'm killing that guy in defense. So now it thinks it succeeded. The doctor says, stupid machine, because of course, because this doctor hates machines. And there's this one point where Jamie's like, and so we go watch him, you know what he's like, and Zoe's like, don't worry, I'll make sure that he doesn't do anything rash. And Jamie's just like, huh. So they realize that since these guys on the planet only know what the machines taught them, that's weird, because like, I, I used to realize, like, computers and humans, they can only really do what they're told to do. Computers can be frustrating, but so can humans if they're not given enough information. The only difference between a human and a machine is that a human can come up with ideas. If they don't know how to solve a problem, they can make a guess and an idea on what to do. Like, if you say, pick up a marker, preferably the pink one, they're probably going to pick up the pink one. If you tell a computer, pick up a marker, preferably the pink one, they don't understand the concept of the word preferably, and they'll just pick up a marker, which may by pure chance be a pink one, but it's not any more likely than it will pick up the blue one. A computer can't come up with ideas. If it's given instructions and if it can't figure out how to do it, it won't be able to make a guess and try to figure out what to do on its own. It's just going to tell you that there has been an error. So, but now the computers are teaching the humans. But the computers themselves are programmed by the Croton, so whatever. But they realize that then the humans probably have a lot of gaps in their knowledge, and those gaps would be what the Crotons don't want them to know. At least not yet. Meanwhile, Zoe finds this computer with complex math. What the heck is this? X plus... What is that hat? Is that to the power of X plus C to the power of equals 8 brackets greater than 20 minus A? And that. Yeah. I feel like I would be able to solve this if I knew what the heck this is, and what, I know that means greater than 20, but what greater than 20? This greater than 20? What do you mean greater than 20? So, the show does something that I think is actually a very good thing to teach, especially for in the 60s, is that there are different kinds of intelligence. Not only can you, like, like... If you were to take my advice, don't ever take an IQ test. Because first of all, it's never going to be accurate. If you're like not in like the perfect state of mind, like if you're too hot or too cold, that's going to affect your mood and your ability to answer the questions. And they're mainly mathematical and scientific anyway. And, and like... And like, even if you are in the perfect state of mind, you're not going to be in the perfect state of mind all the time. Your IQ is going to be bouncing off all over the place. Not to mention that IQ is, by definition, the average IQ of the human is 100. Like, seriously, the IQ chart will alter every time a human is born to make the average 100. Not to mention that once you know your IQ, you're just going to be comparing it to everyone else who has a higher IQ than you. There's also EQ, however, which is emotional intelligence. But, so, Zoe manages to do the math equations quite easily to the point that she gets a higher IQ than more than twice as good as their best student. And that and the doctor's like, yes, well, she is some kind of a genius. And Zoe's just smiling like an idiot. And then the doctor's like, it can be very irritating. Yeah. Many people who are so freaking good at math and science like that lack much emotional intelligence. They feel the need to, like, prove that they're better than everyone else. I myself was dealing with one of those guys. Like, I had done my work for the day the previous day, so I technically had a day off. And that person had to shove it down my throat that they got a week ahead, not just a day. Eventually, I, I, I wasn't able to make them see it. They were just shrugging like an idiot. And I was just like, you know, the fact that you're being arrogant shows that you're lacking emotional intelligence. You can be intelligent at emotions and not be intelligent at math, or you can be intelligent at language, or anything, really. If you're not smart in one category, you're probably smart in another. School just looks at the useless stuff like math and science and acts like, if you do it, then you're smart at everything. And then later, as it turns out, the Crotons of course ask for Zoe. And if she doesn't go and get almost killed by them, if not nearly paralyzed to the point of the doctor needs to hit it, doesn't with a Anyway, so then the doctor decides that she can't go alone, so he decides to take the test himself. Shut 
shut up, Zoe. So they waltz on through, and then Jamie's all just comes in. And he's like, wait, why? And then the, and the guy's just like, your people are all gone. They are now companions of the Crotons. Is this guy working for the Crotons, or is he just stupid? Well, yeah, yeah. Jamie, my man, yeah. So the doctor and Zoe managed to get, not be hypnotized by a force chamber using a chain to equalize the power or whatever, and then the doctor manages to open up the door because isn't he so clever, and Zoe acts like an idiot, almost goes out right into the firing range. Luckily, they managed to escape by just kind of duck and roll. <laughs> what the heck are these guys? Is that like a freaking pentagon or heptagon on their heads? I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. Oh, he's using the crowbar to try and open the door from the bottom. I thought he was looking for a crowbar to smash through it. I like how it's like making it very clear that these guys think that humans are objects. They're referring to it as it and saying like, that is not a gong. So they take Jamie because they figure it's not a gong, like the Doctor and Zoe. I would say like, all like, oh, this has the same pattern as the Doctor and Zoe, but the Doctor is a Time Lord, so that doesn't really work. I mean, Time Lords look like humans, but so do Gons. So, they just realize that's not a Gon, so it probably has the same level of intelligence as the Doctor and Zoe. But then as they put the Force field around, they're just like, this is not a high mind, it's a primitive. I guess we'll just kill it. Cliffhanger for part two. One, five, plah. ding <laughs> Are you dropping a UFO, like, as a visual to show what space travel is? Then you will hypnotize you. <laughs> That's my boy taking it like a champ. I just want to mention, like, many people see that as a common second doctor quote, Oh my giddy aunt. That is apparently the first and only time in his entire era he actually says that. Uh, also apparently the Crotons was once uh, on the Five Faces of Doctor Who. It was a rerun, 20th anniversary. Do you remember? Well, do you remember? I don't remember it. I wasn't around, but... Can you, like, imagine back in the late 20th century, you'd be lucky if you managed to see something again through a rerun. That was mentioned in Back to the Future, a rerun. The kid's like, what's a rerun? I'm like, what is a rerun? It's when they show another show again. <laughs> like, TVs do that all the time now, and now we got DVDs and all this stuff. But, but yeah, apparently the Crotons was made because they only wanted four parters, because that's all they had a room for. Normally, that would be the Tomb of the Cybermen now, which, actually, the only second Doctor four-parters are the Highlanders, the Underwater Menace, the Moonbase, the Macra Terror, the Tomb of the Cyberman, and the Crotons. And the Tomb of the Cyberman wasn't found until 1991, so they had to show the Crotons. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the Chumblies from Galaxy 4, blast it with smoke, that'll do it. So, the Doctor goes back to the TARDIS and tricks Zoe, Jamie, and us into thinking that he's just gonna screw off without Jamie. Especially the fact they threw in the line, well, he's safe here, isn't he? And I'm like... How much do you hate Jamie right now? But anyway, so as it turns out, it was just a get sign to help defeat the Crotons. And the Crotons actually seemingly destroyed the TARDIS. Back in episode 2, when they when the guy was telling Jamie, like, oh, they just went through. I felt like that was going to be a cliffhanger. This should have been a cliffhanger. I guess they didn't want the kids to be too scared. But as it turns out, there's this thing called the Hads, which apparently also was a thing in an 11th Doctor story, Cold War, where as long as the Doctor remembers to set it, if it's being attacked, it'll materialize nearby. The heck. So the cliffhanger for part three is just the doctor gets buried under a bunch of rubble telling Zoe to run. And Jamie's off being like, who needs the doctor? Not, not really. He, he's just like, I like how Jamie's just like doing his best, mate. He's just owning this. To part four, for the final part. Get it? I just want to point out how back in Highlander Jamie, he would have had his mind more than blown from seeing these tube things. Now it's just so casual. Right, so 
Apparently, I just want to mention, apparently, according to Stuart Review stuff, this story was written by Robert Holmes, who is apparently a very good guy in Classic Who, apparently. Apparently, he writes a lot of good stories and made a lot of cool monsters, like the Sondarans and Otans. Haven't seen either of those two yet. But anyway, so, uh, but his first two stories were this one and the Space Pirates, which is the final missing one, and I haven't heard good things about that one either. This is kind of just a forgotten story. It's not great, it's not bad, it just kind of sits there in the middle. I once saw this guy, like, uh, like, like, put, like, a spectrum with green, yellow, red, yellow. The color representing, like, how good the film is. There's, like, those that are really good ones, like, uh, the case of Androzania here, and Earthshock, and Pyramids of Mars, and all that. Then there are ones that are okay, like, the Crotons and the other ones, then there are the red ones, which are just the bland, boring, very bad ones, and then there are the ones that are so bad it's good. Like, um, what are some so bad it's good ones? Doctor Who, a lot of things from the 60s, for example. Maybe the Underwater Menace? That was kind of bland, though. I don't really know. But, uh, so the Doctor, uh, the Doctor's asking, like, why Jamie going after them, and the guy claims that he went in and hour after the doctor and Zoe, Jamie stood there with a crowbar for an hour trying to lift the door? That's what I call perseverance, man. So the doctor and Zoe rescue Jamie, and Jamie's all just like, okay, what now? And the doctor's like, okay, you're gonna go to this scientist dude and tell him this. And Jamie's like, whoa, 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 hold up. And the doctor's like, no, 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 no time to explain. Bye. I kind of get it. The doctor probably thinks that Jamie's an idiot for going in after him, but he has no idea what Jamie just went through. Like, like this is another thing that I said in my video, like, uh, please be kind, plus my thoughts on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 3, is that, like, yeah, you can think that someone's an idiot, but chances are they have their reasons. Unless if they, like, give an explanation that just sounds idiotic, like, they probably have their reason. You can't just judge it. And yet, even though the doctor kind of treated Jamie like crap there, he still goes to the scientist dude and is all like gas masks and is like, No, 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 the doctor said this. That's what I call like a good friend. Yeah, please be kind also my thoughts on Crimes of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, that's literally what I put. Okay, I didn't catch this. According to Stuart Review stuff, apparently there is like a forbidden zone. That's where the people were killed. That's why the Crotons never saw them. But still, like after thousands of years, you'd think that they'd suspect something. But uh, uh, he says like, the Dominators did it better with the, why they wouldn't go to that spot. And when the Dominators does something better than another story, you know you got a problem. So, the Crotons apparently send these guys so that they can pilot a spaceship, and there's only two of them, and the spaceship needs four to pilot, so they're getting the Doctor and Zoe. What about the other intelligent people? Were they not intelligent enough, and that's why you killed them? You were gonna kill the Doctor and Zoe, too. Or was it to see if they were intelligent enough that they would dodge it? Because the woman, like, didn't, at the beginning of the story, didn't dodge it. The Doctor and Zoe saved her. I don't know. They just kept an eye on the Doctor and Zoe, and just, and just figured, like, ah, oh, the thing will just kill him, and didn't even watch it. But with the Doctor and Zoe, they're just like, that's kind of impressive with the chain thing, we'll watch them with here. And the daughter's all like, we won't do that, and the Corton is just like, we'll kill you if you don't. And the daughter's like, well then what? Why are the chances of you meeting another people intelligent? And another people. And another person. And another per just another person with an intellect like ours. And they're like, we're wasting time. You're wasting time. You spent a thousand years looking for these guys. Wasting time. Oh, I didn't realize we were done. Uh, so they defeat the Crotons by, like, getting a chemical and basically knocking them over or something. The guys are just like, oh, I guess we have to come up with our own answers then. Would I recommend this story? Not really. It's kind of just a classic second Doctor story, but it's not at all important to the rest of the show, so don't worry about plot. But, uh, thanks, Mitch. So, um, yeah, watch it if you want, but it's not really that important, and not that great, honestly. Uh, Stuart Review stuff says that the great, the best thing about it is the Croton's design, but at the same time, the worst part of it is also the Croton design. They look amazing from some angles, but not from all angles. So, thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't like it, please leave a dislike. So, you didn't enjoy it. Leave a comment down below if you liked it. Like, this is awesome. Guess my motivation. Encourage me if you didn't like it, please leave a comment below. Why you didn't like it? Like, protect them as well. Won't be going to ruin it. Just give it a like. And subscribe so you know when it goes out. Thanks again so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. We're review story number 48 The Seeds of Death. Wait, 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 bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ugh. Scrooge.